On Ronnie's first action, she's going to flip this over to do a movement action. She's going to use that to move into this room where that uh, slinger is. She's also in the Battle Shrine, which gives her plus one for any action that uses that icon for a boost. And you can imagine we're going to utilize that. This regular attack card, deal two damage if it's undead plus one. Well, so she's just going to deal two damage. But with this, because she's in a Battle Shrine, it's three points. That will take out this Slinger, because a Slinger only has three as health. And that's her first trophy. It's a Beast Trophy. And what's great is she did that, and now she can do a claim action for this Whisper card. Bring one Beast Trophy token to the Battle Shrine. Check. Our new Whisper, whisper card will be bring a weapon to the Armor Shrine. We need to get some items. We're going to also do an Alter Fate action. Give another player up to two Fate cards from your hand. We're going to do that to give um, Seike this card, which will give her another search icon. Let's draw our Fate card. Oh yes, another beast. We only have two beasts on the board, and we're going to try and keep it that way. This Ice Hound is going to move over here and then down into this room with that Bone Sorrow Archer. And that poor warrior, <laughs> just moving back to that room. First action that we're going to have Aseke do is a move action. She's going to flip this over because she needs to keep healing each, each and every other round. Um, but she's going to do that to move into the room with those two enemies. Remember, technically her movement is two, but she's just going to move one into this room. She's then going to activate this regular attack and discard this card, uh, this fate card with the battle toke icon so that she can do two points of damage and that's going to allow her to take out this brigand flamethrower only has two health and now she has three trophies yeah we're really hoping here no undead yes brigand awesome we're going to activate the brigands there's only four brigands so our first one here the flamethrower is going to move here and then move back not going to do that then we've got our homunculus and he's going to go here and here Ooh, one away and then our, oh, I can't even remember what this guy's name is, the Thrall is going to do the wavy line, then the um, uh, a lightning bolt, and then the arrows, which he won't move. And then our last one is another homunculus, and he's going to do arrows, which is this way, and then the squiggly line, which will be moving back, so he'll just stay here. First thing we're going to do is Arani's turn. We're going to use this card, action card, to draw up to, up, up to four fate cards. So we're only going to draw three because that's the amount that we can actually hold in our hand. So no reason to draw four. Ooh. And, okay, so we found these two plus Dead Rising, which we'll look at in a second. So we do get to continue drawing. So we still have our three action cards. And then now we have our first event. This says the active player spawns three undead enemies. Spawn enemies activate immediately. Oh, that's terrible. The dead are rising. And don't forget, we have to flip this card to show we did that action. We'll spawn one over here. That's our necromancer. And he would go squiggly line. So he's actually never going to move because that squiggly line is always facing this way. He's just going to chill in that room. Then we have the bone drake. And the Bone Drake is going to move Mace size, so thank goodness, not going to go for a Seike. And over here, we're going to get another Necromancer. And what's really nice, he isn't going to move either, because he would move Mace side, but he can't move that way, so he'll never move from that location. Whew! Our next action is we're going to flip this card to do a movement action of one space. We're going to move into this room, and I don't think we're going to do the uh, shrine ability because we already have one ally and you can only ever have one ally. Who are we going to activate? Let's see. Ooh, brigands. We have the three brigands up here. The thrall, which would go uh, squiggly line and lightning bolt, which would bring him back to the same room and arrow. Then we've got the homunculus. He won't move this way, but he'll move here. This homunculus is going to attack our Arani. But fortunately, only does two damage, and Arani has two defense, so no issues there. And then the last to go is this flamethrower, and he's going to go lightning bolt, which is nowhere, and then mace over in the corner. 
For this turn, I think I'm going to activate this card simply to do a move action and move two spaces. So a Seike will move one, two, and now she's in a healing shrine where if she heals, she'll heal one additional wound. She'll activate this heal card to heal a total of three wounds. Yeah. And we'll grab those one, two, and three. Now, it was boosted because of the location that she's at, and it says here, if you boost this action, you may draw one fate card. So I'm gonna say that she can draw a fate card because it's boosted because she's in that shrine. So she drew this card, uh, not that helpful, but still not terrible. Let's draw to see who activates. Ooh, undead, and there's tons of those now. So we just spawned three more. Let's do the ones on the top left first. So first we have that necromancer, or technically they're not called Mac, they're called Magus. And he is not gonna go anywhere, that's right. Then we've got the Bone Drake, and he is also not going to go anywhere. He'll stay there for the rest of the game. Then we've got over here, we've got another Bone Drake. He'll move up one. And over here, we have the, oh yeah, the Archer. And the Archer's going to move here. And because he's here, he can attack either one of these heroes. I'm going to have him attack Arani, so he'll do three points of damage, and he takes out one of the shields, so Arani takes two points of damage. She'll put one on her character sheet, and then one on her first action card. And of course, this next Necromancer activates. He would be going this way towards the mace. Can't, so he's done. And then we have over here another Necromancer, and he's also not going to move. And then we have another Archer and he's just gonna move up here. Now it's on to Arani's turn. She is going to flip this action card and use it to move one space. She's gonna move herself deep into the enemy territory. She's surrounded by, you know, on three sides over there. She's then gonna activate Search 2 and discard these two cards which each have magnifying glasses to do a four search action. That is gonna allow her to claim this treasure as it was only a three, but she did a four in a brigand location. This means we finally claimed our fourth <laughs> Whisper card. We are so behind. That is our fourth one. We really got to get going. Okay, and now this one, bring one brigand tro to trophy to the arcane shrine. Let's do some enemy activation. Undead again. <laughs> well, the nice thing about undead is most of them are easy. Not going to move. Not going to move. Not going to move. Not going to move here. But unfortunately, <laughs> this Blasted Archer, we just gotta get rid of these archers. It's gonna attack for three on a Seike, and poor Seike has no uh, defense, so she is gonna take three points of damage. Now you guys, I could be using her Luck of the Bards, um, and I didn't use it a bunch of times before when she was attacked because I didn't wanna overload her hand with Fate cards, but I think I'm gonna do it this time. I'm going to draw a fate card. Ooh, that's actually, I have to discard down to three though. And I think I'm gonna discard this one. So this will go in the discard pile. Oh wait, no, no, she, oh yeah, I have to only hold three with this ability. Yeah, that's why. But I have three fate cards, but I do take three points of damage. I'll place one on my hero card right here. And the other two are gonna go one on this card and one on this card. The last two undead activate, this one doesn't go anywhere, and this archer is just simply going to move back into this room. Alright, now we move on to Aseke. Okay, aseke has got a plan. Using this card to do a movement action, and we're going to move one space. We're going to get ourselves away from that blasted archer. Then we're going to do this search two action, and then if you receive a treasure token this turn, you may discard it immediately to claim a new action card. Well, we're going to boost that to uh, a four search because of these two cards and that means we can claim this treasure token now normally you can only hold a max of three treasures and that's our, our trophies including this treasure token so we'd have to discard one but how i'm reading this is, is i can immediately discard it to claim an action card instead so i'm just going to discard this and get an action card and of course flip this one we have purchased with that treasure token this additional action card. It has a magic attack that deals one damage to an enemy in uh, the same or adjacent room and a search two. 
So normally that would have cost us three trophies to be able to get that. We just had to do a, a treasure token, not bad. Enemy movement time, let's see. Oh my gosh, undead again. These top two, the uh, I call them the Necromancer and the Bone Drake, both don't move. Neither does this Bone Drake. The Necromancer or Magus, whatever you call it, here doesn't move. But this Blasted Archer, who's the bane of my existence, is going to move here and is going to attack for three on Arani. Arani, right, that's Arani, right? Yep. Arani only has two shield. This is a piercing of one, so two points of damage. We'll place those two here. Ow! <laughs> and of course, this Necromancer doesn't move, but this Archer jumps back here. First thing Arani's gonna do is, she couldn't use this last time because she already did a claim action, but she's gonna claim with this treasure token and get this Ring of Strength. Once per turn, she gains an additional um, fight boost so she can boost her attacks with that. That'll be really nice. And it's a trinket car, which is something that we need. We then put out, ooh, it's a Talisman of Death. So that might be helpful too. And this does not um, count against the offer limit. So we actually get to draw another card, which was awesome. And we'll have the um, Scroll of Wisdom. So we now have five items that we could purchase from the uh, uh, weapon deck. Arani's first actual action is going to be to use this as a movement to move one. She's gonna get her butt out of dodge and get away from that, <laughs> from that archer so he doesn't keep activating. I guess he's gonna keep activating, but he doesn't activate and hurt her. Then, we're going to discard Brawn to deal three damage to an enemy in the same room. That is gonna do uh, three damage to defeat this Thrall. However, the Thrall has hard to kill. And that means that this enemy may not be eliminated unless the hero discards one fate card immediately before performing an attack action. I'm gonna consider that as an attack action. I think that's how it's supposed to work. So I'm gonna discard this fate card, our last fate card, so we can defeat this brigand. And now we have a brigand trophy as well. Yes, we have now defeated five enemies, finally. Next, we're just gonna use this card to heal three wounds in our hero area. Take these three off. All action cards are ready and available for our use. Now let's activate some enemies. Come on, be something that's not bad. <laughs> Ooh, beasts! That's definitely not bad. There's only two of those, I think, on the board. Both beasts are over here. The warrior is going to go squiggly line, which is, uh, no, no, arrow first, and then squiggly line. Oh, bummer. Remember his ability. He is one aggressive dude. If this enemy ends his movement in a room without a hero, he may move into an adjacent room containing a hero and attack. Well, the sake is right over here. So he's going to move over in here and attack for four against the Seike. That's gonna hit both of her actions over here. She is fully wounded yet again. Ow. The Ice Hound over here is gonna do the uh, Lightning Bolt, which will move him here, and then move him up here for the mace. I'm sorry, you guys. I keep forgetting when she was attacked, she should have been able to draw another Fate card because of her Luck of the Bards. So she does now have two Fate cards, fortunately. Her first action is to discard two wounds from her hero area, and then if this is boosted, she'll draw a fate card. It's not going to be boosted, but she can heal two spots. And I think we're going to heal these two cards for right now. What we're going to do next is we're going to use this card simply to do a movement of two. We're going to move ourselves over to the Arcane Shrine, and you know what that means? We are going to then do a claim action to claim this Whisper. Bring one Brigand Trophin to the Arcane Shrine. Let's see what that next card's gonna be. We're still only at level ones. Oh boy. Bring one Undead Trophy to the Hero Shrine. That is not bad. We can have uh, Asake do that next turn. Let's see what we get for fate. Beasts again. Is that a bad thing? Yes, I think it's gonna be a bad thing. Well, there's only two beasts, but you know, of course, this Ice Hound is gonna activate. Uh, it's gonna go, oh no, actually it's okay. It's gonna go lightning bolt over here and then down to here and that's it actually, so no attack. Oh, I was looking at that wrong at first. I thought he was gonna attack. And then the warrior is gonna go arrows, which is this way, and then um, lightning bolt, which would bring him back, but he's not gonna go back and he's not adjacent to any heroes, so he's just gonna stay there. That was not a bad activation. 
All right, Arani's turn. Let's go. Arani is going to activate both of these actions to do two single movements. Remember, she can only move one space at a time, so she'll move here and her movement. But then her second action will be to move here, and that's going to allow her, because she brought the Ring of Strength over to the um, uh, Foresight Shrine, she can claim this Whisper. Bring a Trinket to the Foresight Shrine. All right, now we're moving. Come on, are we going to be at level two yet? Let's see. Nope. Uh, discard at least three wounds while healing at a health shrine. <laughs> well, I think we know who should go over there. What's our activation this time? Ooh, brigands. That shouldn't be bad. We have one brigand up here, and he's going to move to this location, and that's it. And then we've got the two homunculuses here. So this one is going to go lightning bolt, and that's it. And this one's going to go arrows, and then squiggly line, which will be back, so that's all he's going to do. Aseke is going to use two actions for movement, this one and this one. Remember, her movement is two. She is quick. So she's going to go one, two, and then do a claim action because she's going to bring one undead trophy to the hero shrine. And here's her undead. She has one of each type. Let's see if we can finally get to level twos. Yes, our first level two. Bring one beast tro trophy and one brigand trophy to the hero shrine. <gasps> yes, she's already there. She'll claim that at the beginning of her next turn. Except for, of course, I already had plants. <laughs> and she still has two more movement, so she's going to move uh, to the healing shrine so that uh, next time she can heal, claim that whisper, move back over there the next turn. Beginning of that turn, she'll claim the following whisper. We are now rolling through these whispers. Let's do an activation. And we have brigands. Here's our three brigands. This homunculus is gonna go um, lightning bolt this way, and that's it. This um, pyro dude is gonna go lightning bolt, can't do that, he's just gonna move over here. And this homunculus can't go that way, so he's just gonna go here. First thing we're gonna do for Arani is draw up to four fate cards and then discard down to your current hand size. So I'm going to draw three fate cards, and fortunately none of them are events. Here's our three fate cards. That's almost awesome. I was hoping for another search one. Bummer. Ugh. But then we'll activate, uh, we'll flip this card to be able to do one movement. We're going to move to here, and I totally forgot that Arani has one beast and one brigand trophy, so she can actually claim this level two, bring one beast trophy and one brigand trophy to the hero shrine. Check. Let's look at our activation. Brigands again. I swear these must have just clumped up. Okay, pyro dude, gonna go here and that's it. Homunculus dude is gonna go up here and over here. And then this dude is gonna go up here and then he'd have to go back and he's not. And that should be it. I forgot to draw another whisper card. <laughs> Ooh, bring one brigand trophy and one undead trophy to the battle shrine. Remember, a Seike right now is at a, a healing shrine, so she'll get to heal one additional health. So she's going to do this discard two wounds to make it discard three. And I believe that's a boost action, so she gets to draw one fate card as well. And she can take care of these three wounds. And that's going to allow her to do a claim action to, to claim this uh, Whisper card. Discard at least three wound tokens and a health shrine. Check. Let's flip over our next Whisper card. Oh, deal at least six damage to an enemy. Whew. We're also just going to flip this card to do a single movement action. We're going to move ourselves to the battle shrine. So at the beginning of the next turn, we can claim that Whisper card that we just flipped over. Let's draw our next fate card. Ooh, the undead. Remember, they're pretty easy to activate. Most of them just hang out where they are. Over here, this guy hangs out so this bone drake doesn't move. This uh, necromancer doesn't move. This bone drake doesn't move. This uh, archer guy does move. He's the one who's really annoying. He's going to move here and here. Are you serious? If I was you watching this, I would be like, why have you taken that archer out? He's going to deal three points of damage to um, Arani. Don't forget, Arani has two shield, but that wonderful archer pierces one. So we're looking at two points of damage. This necromancer won't move. 
This Necromancer won't move, and this Archer simply moves here. Arani's gonna flip this card to draw two fake cards and then discard down to her current hand size. She's essentially gonna have to discard two cards here, but we're, yes! We were looking for another search, and we got one. So we'll discard these two. We'll discard these two, and, oh actually, yeah, yeah. and we've got three cards left. Then we're gonna do a move action. We're gonna flip this card over to move one space. We're gonna run away from that archer. <laughs> we're gonna move into here. Another enemy activation. Oh, and instead we have an event, a twist of fate. Each player passes their hand of fate cards to the left. Players who end up with no fate cards may drop to two fate cards into their hand. Are you serious? So right now this is a Seike's hand. A Seike's gonna have to give this up and give it to Arani. Arani in turn is giving up, or giving over to a Seike these three cards. I mean, it's not terrible, but I had this whole plan and now it's gonna mess it up. <laughs> and that means we're really pushing through the deck here. And by the deck, I mean the Fate deck. First action a Seike is gonna activate is this one. And we're simply gonna use it to do a move action. We're gonna move uh, a Seike into here and then do a claim action to claim this bring one brigand trophy and one undead trophy to the battle shrine. Brigand and undead, just so you guys can see, because she's had these three for a while. Um, she's got both of those. Sweet. Let's see what our next uh, whisper card is. We're really dwindling this down now. It's feeling good. Okay, bring one beast and one brigand trophy to the hero shrine. Oh, three, four, five. That is not bad. And we have a total of five left. We are rocking it. Our second action is we're gonna flip this card to do another move action. We're gonna move ourselves one, two, so that we're one away from this area where next turn we can move to, do a search, claim a treasure, and with doing that, we'll also collect another whisper card. <laughs> we're just rocking through these, this is awesome. Let's see who's gonna activate next. Undead, in case you forgot, doesn't move, does it move? Does it move? Does it move? Moves. <laughs> Let's see what he does. He goes down with the arrow and then he'd go up. Yes. He stays here, he does not attack. Thank goodness. And this one also moves just up here. And this one doesn't move. Arani's first action is a free action. She's got a beast and a brigand. We already did this once. It's kind of weird that there's two trophies of the same thing. Bring one beast and one brigand trophy to the hero shrine. Check. We already did that, so that's done. Let's draw the next one. Bring a beast trophy and an undead trophy to the arcane shrine. Ooh, not bad either. We're gonna also use this uh, uh, fate card to move one enemy up to two spaces. And we're gonna move this enemy one, two, way up here. That way we don't have to worry about it being activated and attacking our heroes. First things first, flip this to heal three of our wounds. One, two, and three. And then we'll just use this search action to move one space. We'll move right up here. Let's see who we're gonna activate. Beast, oh my gosh, that was perfect timing. So let's see, this, Oh, this guy's gonna go into here, and he's going to attack um, Arini, or Arani, <laughs> Arini, Arani, but he only does two points of damage. Arani has two for his shield, doesn't do anything. This guy is gonna go arrow up, and then he's gonna move um, lightning bolt, oh, nuggets, which is right here, and that means he's gonna come right down into here and attack Arini for four. That's gonna do two points of damage. We'll put one on our hero card and one on this card right here. All right, let's move to a Seike's turn. First things first, a Seike is gonna use this card. It says, give another player one of your trophy or treasure tokens. And she's gonna give her undead token over to Arani. Then she's gonna use this action right here to move one space. She'll move into this beast lair. Then she's gonna activate this search. And it's a search two. She's gonna use these two cards to make it a search four. And she's not gonna do this ability about the treasure because what she's gonna do, she wants to use that treasure for something special. 
That search was a four, so she can claim this treasure token. She also just can claim this whisper card, search for at least four in a beast layer. Yes. And she's going to give this up to get a, um, uh, an item card right away. She's gonna grab herself this cool looking bow. May not be used by clerics or fighters. Well, she's a rogue, so she is fine. You can target enemies in adjacent rooms with your regular attacks. If the regular attack you are resolving already allows you to target enemies in adjacent rooms, you may discard a fake card to deal plus two damage instead. Oh, sweet. Big thing is, it's a weapon card. And we'll replace it with another weapon. We also have to replenish the whisper cards. And we have, ooh. Collect two out of the three, weapon, clothing, and trinket. Let's draw to see who's activated. Brigands. These three are the only three brigands on the board. This guy moves here, and that's it. This guy moves down here and down here. And this guy can't move this way, but can move this way. Done. Easy. First thing we're gonna do is a claim action. We have an undead and a beast. That's why we had a seike give over the undead so we can claim this trophy. Bring one beast and trophy, one beast trophy and one undead trophy to the arcane shrine. Check. Come on, we're hoping for the dungeon lord to come out. <gasps> Eliminate the lord of the dungeon! Yes! The lord of the dungeon will come out right here, <laughs> upside down. There we go. And don't forget his ability. Immediately before resolving an attack against this enemy, the attacking player may lower the defense of this enemy by two for each shield on fake cards in their hand. But he's a 14 as his shield. Oh my gosh. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do this heal. Uh, discard two wounds from your hero, hero area. You may discard an additional star wounds. If you do, each other hero can discard star wounds from their area. So I have a total of stars of one, two. So I can heal two wounds, plus I can heal up to two more. I'm going to heal this one. That means a Seike will be able to heal one wound. And of course, I have to flip this card. She only has the wound on her character sheet, so we'll take care of that. And then we're just simply going to use this card, flip it over for a movement, because we're going to get out of that spot that's covered in beasts. We'll move to this location. OK, what enemy is going to activate now? Ooh, undead. That should be easy. There's only two undead that move. This one goes one, two. And this one here is going to go down to here. And then that's it. Now the Lord Dungeon would attack anybody in his space for five damage. But no one's there. So that's the end of this turn. Now we're back to a Seike. Whoa!